This one is by a poet called Ziba Karabasi. She was born in Tabriz, which means she's an Azerbaijani Turk from Iran. She moved when she was very, very young. She was about, uh, you know, somewhere. She, she moved in 1989, so that made her 15. She still recites poetry in Persian. Um, I left Iran when I was 15, and I wouldn't dare recite poetry in Persian. So she has really, she barely speaks English. I think all these years she's just kept herself from immersing in, uh, into another language and she just kept her Persian. The wonderful mastery of language with her comes because she actually just makes up her own language. And as you can imagine, that's extremely difficult to, to translate. I wrote a small essay about the translation of this um, in Center for Art of Translations uh, publication called Two Lines. Um, so I'll read the poem in, in um, I have to read this one in English first, and then I'll read it in Persian. Love is lemony. Now that you draw the pink veil off my face, love is this very lemon that goes lemon lemon to the orange. Lashes and neck long, lashes and neck bent, lashes back, neck askew. My head cockeyed out the nook over the shoulder behind sight. Shoulders like square houses, childhood doodle houses. We stand facing each other, two mad souls, neck to neck, shoulder to shoulder, lashes and neck. And then a bit bent. Bend a bit to roll over. Let me blaze on your shoulder and eyes. Your eyes that kiss, kiss, wet my lips. Your eye that kisses, wets my lips. Your eye that plunges into the furrow. And once again we see nothing and coil like vine and whirl in noise and rapture. Come. Come, if you draw the soft pink aside, love is this very lemon that somewhat sour leaps, lemon, lemon, to the orange. So it's, it's obvious that this is an erotic poem. Um, and she uses short phrases, short repetitive phrases that are repetitive also in sound. And to me, it seemed like she was creating sort of the breathlessness of the moment of passion and lust. Um, and so the challenge for me was to convey what she wanted to say, but also repeat sounds. Um, and this was, it's much harder than <laughs> I'm capable of, of expressing, but it was very difficult. The Persian is, and I'll talk a little bit about it after I've read the Persian to you, you'll recognize the repetition. repetition. Esh limuist. حالا که طول صورتی رو از صورتم پس بزنی عشق همین لیمو است که لیمو لیمو راه می رود تا نارنج پلک ها و گردنی بلند پلک ها و گردنی خم کمی به پشت کمی به پهلو پشت چشم و روی شانه شانه ها شکل نقاشی های کودکی خانه ها خانه های چارگوش سرم خمیده از این گوشه خانه بیرون روبروی هم ایستادیم دو دیوانه گردن به گردن شانه به شانه پلک ها و گردنی و بعد کمی خم کمی خم که بچرخم به پشت و تپ کنم روی شانه و چشم چشمت که بوس بوس نم کند بر لبم چشمت که بوس خیس کند بر لبم و چشمت که در حفر فرو رود و دیگر بار نبینیم هیچ و مثل پیچ بچرخیم و بپیچیم در صدا و سودا بیا بیا صورتی رو نرم اگر پس بزنی پیش عشق همین لیمویس که لیمو لیمو کمی ترش میپرد تا نارنج So in the first part of the poem there's a lot of uh, you know in the first stanza there's a lot of uh, in the in the second stanza there's a lot of p k and g so lashes and neck long, lashes and neck bent, lashes back, neck askew. So a lot of short, one or two syllable words with repetitive sounds. Um, and again, uh, as you saw in the diagram before, 
I look at the text because it's 100% loss and I have to build it up. I look at the whole text as, as I, I can, if I have a gain somewhere, I try to have, uh, if I have a loss somewhere, I try to have a gain somewhere else for that, for that loss. So, um, because the, the, the word, there's an oblique reference to uh, a man's uh, private parts in, in the last stanza when she says, uh, your eye that kiss, your eyes that kiss, kiss wet my lips. Your eye that kisses wets my lips. In Persian, she uses the word I, and, and this is an oblique reference. I wasn't sure whether I could get that here, so I actually chose, instead of using the word bent or crooked, in the first, in the third stanza, I said, this is the part where she's talking about how she's hugging him and her head is behind his head because um, this is their wedding day and they're standing face to face. First they get married and then, and then they, they, have, they consummate their marriage with so much love. It goes, my head cockeyed out the nook over the shoulder behind sight. So I try to sort of work like a diagram in the whole text. Um, I think because I think the whole thing makes sort of a psychological effect on, on the reader, not line by line.